Uh, well, uh, thanks for staying till the end, everyone. Um, so I'm David, and I'm from UMass Amherst. I'm going to be talking about marginal inference in Markov random fields using Frank Wolf. Um, and so I'm just going to introduce uh, some, like, basically the bare minimum you need to know to understand uh, Markov random fields. And um, it's a fairly straightforward application of Frank Wolf to marginal inference. But it does bring up some interesting questions um, and sort of future directions. And I sort of see this as very preliminary, preliminary work that I think has some fertile opportunities. Um, so in terms of Markov random fields, imagine you have a joint distribution on a bunch of variables represented by the, uh, the nodes in the graph. And you um, encode a distribution by defining an energy function on, um, on the uh, nodes where basically it's the energy function factorizes over the cliques of the graph. And then the probability of a given configuration is just the exponormalized energy of that configuration. Um, and so one standard uh, maneuver in graphical models is that you don't actually think in terms of x, which is the nodes. You think of some vector mu, which is this really long vector that basically has information for the setting of every possible clique. And the reason is that when you do that, the energy becomes a linear function. Um, and so you have this linear function in this much higher dimensional space, but um, it's easier to work with. So uh, marginal inference is basically the task of finding the expected um, mu under the distribution encoded by that theta. And the reason this is useful is that, say you're doing maximum likelihood learning, the sufficient statistics are mu. And so the expected sufficient statistics are something you do when you're doing maximum likelihood learning. Um, and so it can be shown that this is basically the solution to this optimization problem. And this is um, the marginal polytope, which is a sort of exponentially complicated uh, sort of set of consistent um, distributions or consistent mu vectors. Um, and so there's two standard relaxations of this. Um, one is that you, you can sort of convexify the entropy. The en entropy is convex, but you're defining it over this mu vector, which is kind of strange. So it's not actually convex in this setting. So um, you, can, you make some sort of convex approximation. And you also sort of approximate um, the marginal polytope with some outer bound called the local polytope. Um, and the entropy approximation has this characteristic that basically it factorizes over, also over the cliques. So it's, um, and this is just the standard entropy on the simplex. Okay, so um, a related problem is map inference, which is just finding the maximum probability configuration, um, mu. And you can just think of this as a black box. And I mean, hundreds of PhD theses have been written on this problem, and there are really good black boxes for it. Another thing to know is that there are, you can sort of think of it in terms of a gray box too, because there are sort of relaxations of map inference that um, are used in these solvers that are basically valid relaxations of the marginal inference problem too. So you may want to sort of po like, peer into the gray box and sort of reason about the um, actual set that they're both optimizing over. So I mean, everyone can sort of see what's going on here. I have, I have an oracle for maximization of a linear function. We're at the Frank Wolf workshop. We have a convex function that we're minimizing. So we're going to basically repeatedly call this oracle to do marginal inference, right? Um, so I'll just uh, point out that this idea of reductions from marginal inference to map inference has been done before in the literature. Um, but in different contexts. So this one from last year basically has a sampling approach. So it's going to converge as O of 1 over the square root of t um, because it's doing sampling. Um, and uh, Frank Wolf can conceivably do better than that. Um, and alternatively, this one basically adds these sort of random constraints to the problem so that break your ability to use a black box solver. So I'm going to try to sort of do better than both of those. Um, and so Frank Wolf is pretty straightforward for this. Um, this is just sort of the generic um, pseudocode for Frank Wolf with line search, which we've talked about a lot today. Um, and sort of a schematic is that you basically have three boxes, one for computing the gradient, one for doing linear minimization, one for line search. I'm just going to talk about line search here. Um, and so in terms of my, my uh, terminology, you basically have some theta of your graphical model, but you're doing map inference with some theta tilde, which is basically some perturb, or like, you know, transformed theta. Uh, theta. And then um, this returns some map solution, and then you go around and around and around. So basically, your marginal, your approximated marginals are some convex combination of map solutions. Um, and your uh, approximation is just, I mean, your objective just has this nice decomposition over the marginal, of uh, the cliques. Um, and so line search, you can do um, just like naively, like, you know, it's a, you, it's a, um, fully differentiable objective. You can just use Newton's method. But basically in the paper I show that you can actually do it in a, like a nice way that scale, where the complexity scales with the number of cliques in the graph, not the number of possible values those cliques take on. So the actual sort of 
cost is a lot less than it would be naively. Um, and so there's, in terms of results, I just, this is just a simple run of the algorithm on a very simple Markov random field, synthetically generated. And there are basically sort of three stories to tell in this plot. One is that the baseline algorithm, which is just this message, pacing, message passing algorithm, TRW, um, is super fast, and it, like comparatively, and works really well. So um, I'm by no means suggesting that you use my algorithm right now for marginal inference. I'm using it sort of like a proof of concept. Um, also, um, the, so the green line is the, my algorithm. The blue line is basically if I use some approximate um, solver for a map inference. And you can see that you actually, it really hurts you a lot. Um, okay, so in terms of the convergence rate, we basically have, there's two parameters in sort of a sort of modern analysis of this. And I'm gonna talk about the delta one first. So um, you need to, so basically dic delta dictates your suboptimality at iteration t. Um, and you can't guarantee the suboptimality of map inference. So basically what people do in the literature, like in the previous literature on this sort of thing, is you can just kind of hope for the best. Um, but I showed in the previous slide that that actually really hurts you. So what I would suggest is basically you relax your subproblems to the local polytope, which basically implies that you're relaxing the overall problem to the local polytope as well, which is a standard approximation for marginal inference. So there's this nice sort of um, parallelism between the constraint structures and the two problems, and so you can invoke that. Um, so the other issue is that, and that this is where I think it gets interesting, is that, so basically there's this curvature term, and the definition doesn't even really matter because basically you see that there's this gradient of the objective, and the gradient of the objective um, gets really, really steep. So, um, so we have these entropy terms, and the gradient of, this is just a 1D entropy, right? And the 1D entropy gradient gets really, really steep at the boundaries. So this basically means that your curvature is unbounded close to the boundaries. So what that means is that sort of the, if, like the convergence rate of the algorithm is just not, like using this analysis is just not even well posed, right? So one thing to keep in mind though is that this gradient gets steep only really close to the, the boundaries of this polytope, right? So you can imagine that if the true marginals, the target marginals are somewhere in the middle, and your algorithm never really gets close to the edge, then you're never going to really you're never really going to encounter that steepness anyway. So there's I like you I made a hypothesis that basically the distance of the true target from the boundary would dictate how fast you converge. And one surrogate for how far you are from the boundary is the entropy of the true target marginals. So I had this experiment where basically what I did is I I value the entropy, I vary the entropy of the true marginals. And the way you can do that is you basically take a fixed setting of the parameters and you just normalize them by some temperature. Um, and I plot basically the amount of work necessary to get within half of a percent of optimality gap. Um, and I truncated at 200 iterations, but this goes up higher. And what you see is that basically there's this transition where suddenly the, algor the algorithm starts converging much faster. And that's for high entropy marginals. So that basically means that if you sort of avoid the boundary, you're safer. Um, and, and there's this sort of linear regime here, and I saw this very consistently across data cases. I didn't really understand it, and I'd, I'd like to talk more about it. Um, so just quickly talking about sort of going beyond this, um, I think an important question to realize is that I don't necessarily know if marker random fields are the right Gibbs distribution to use this for, because the reason being that we have good marginal inference algorithms for marker random fields already. And there are sort of these Gibbs distributions over other combinatorial objects that people consider. So like matchings, for example. So basically here what I do is I have a plot of a table of problem family, the map algorithm, and the associated marginal algorithm. And there sort of are these nice uh, counterparts for marginal inference to map inference in a lot of families. Um, one example where this isn't available is for bipartite matching, where you have these polynomial time map algorithms, but the marginal algorithms um, aren't necessarily available. So like one potential future direction would be to use this for matchings. Like, so you could do like maximum likelihood learning of matchings. However, one thing to know is that like there's a very sort of, there's an, another reduction that basically reducts, reduces matching to uh, loopy graphical models, and that works pretty well too. So this might actually uh, not be that useful. Um, okay, so the another thing is that there's been a lot of sort of fancier Frank Wolf proposed than what I used here. Um, and so one, future direction would be thinking about how that you could special case that to graphical models. So one direction, and so there's been a lot of nice work recently, including this one on sort of norm penalized um, conditional gradient. And this idea of regularized marginal inference actually makes sense in some applications where you want to sort of penalize your marginals to not be too spiky or something like that. Um, and you could solve this using these sort of composite minimization frameworks. 
Um, an alternative is that, so there's this, uh, this is recently proposed idea of sort of having what's called a linear, a local linear oracle. So basically, rather than just solving a linear problem over your set, you solve a linear problem subject to not going too far from where you are now. So you basically have a ball of radius r from your previous iterate. And you can show nice uh, convergence properties for these algorithms. Um, but basically, this just suggests an interesting combinatorial optimization problem. And the question is, is this solvable? If so, then we might be able to do marginal inference faster than what I'm doing. It doesn't converge that fast. So um, in conclusion, um, we need to figure out how to handle this entropy gradient because it's a little annoying, but I think that like, Gibbs distributions are really common in practice and it's an interesting sort of approach to reduce it to map inference. And um, there are plenty of extensions that I think we should also consider. Entropy doesn't have Lipschitz gradient, but no solution is in the inferior. So you said if the solution is far enough from the boundary, then you could expect to perhaps even have linear convergence to it before standard time. Yeah. So did you observe linear convergence in your? Um, um, I guess that's assuming you know exact line search. And so I, I did do exact line search, um, but I I didn't do that enough. I basically didn't do the double grid search over both entropies and. Um, Sort of the, looking at the resolution in time. I just haven't done an experiment. Okay. It's interesting though. If you do it, I'd be interested. Okay, yeah, sure. So uh, you talked about uh, sort of finding maximal matching versus doing marginal inference. Um, so it, it's known that in general, sort of counting the number of, of matching the graph is NP hard. So I'm wondering if does marginal inference run into this barrier or if there's some way around it? Oh, yeah. Is that why you got, is that why you have the big X? Oh, yeah, so, so first of all, I, um, I should have been more clear that, so the, the, the true marginal inference problem is sharp P hard okay. for, for both of these, so for graphical sorry. models, for, for your, uh, matchings as well. And it's called like the permanent for matchings, right? Um, but I, I guess the first approximation is that I, I make this entropy approximation. So I'm not solving the original problem to begin with. Um, and then uh, there's like further relaxations, the local polygons and stuff like that. Um, so in terms of the, uh, the matching example, I think, the, it's, it's, so there is work showing that the Bethe entropy on matchings is like very high quality and convex. Um, but there's also work that shows that the sum product algorithm is linearly convergent for that algorithm, I mean for that problem. So it's, it's, it, it doesn't sound like it's actually that hard of a problem to approximate. Another question? So we ways to incorporate the rational inference tools Inside your, inside your, inside your problem within the Frank Wolf thing? You mean some sort of maybe like decomposition or yes, something like yes, that? Yes. Um, yeah, I'd have to think about it. Um, I mean, there are, I mean, one thing I addressed before is that, like, for example, on trees, there's basically, you can do map inference and marginal inference. So you, can, you, you can imagine some sort of decomposition where you're sort of reasoning about these uh, different things like that. And in the name of all of us, I want to thank all the speakers for today. <laughs> all the slides and all the papers are on the website, and the videos will be soon open on YouTube. So, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.